So you want to be a harmonica player. You really do. Well, are, are you prepared to learn about how to use your tongue? Is that what you're prepared for? That's what I'm going to show you today. Um, and this was something that I was taught by my teacher, Nat Riddles, uh, and it was introduced in a, in a strangely delicate way. Um, I, 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 we were having a conversation in our first lesson, uh, and um, he was talking about his tongue, and uh, I kind of I kind of laughed. I was a you know 28 year old, I was still kind of a kid in some ways, and I said, "Do you ever get women who who?" And he and he laughed, and he said, "Oh, they'll oh yeah, they'll come up to you. They'll go, you're a harmonica player. I know about you guys. I know about you guys. It has something to do with the tongue thing. Well, it turns out that there's." some stuff that you do with your tongue that's sort of hard to talk about, hard to, hard to describe, but sort of side-to-side, -side swishy stuff that makes really cool sounds. Anyway, I'm going to talk about that now. Um, and, but if I were to raise the whole issue of how you use your tongue as a blues harmonica player, first most thing, obviously, is some of you are lip pursers, and I'm going to, you know, there, I have videos about lip pursing and tongue blocking, but I just want to kind of quickly review the basic move that you make to get from lip pursing, this sort of one note thing, to tongue blocking is that you simply put your tongue on the harmonica. And if I want to tongue block, let's say the one four octave, I could play one blow lip pursing or one four blow, but I'm going to take my tongue uh, and I'm going to kind of put that tip of that tongue against the piece of wood between holes two and three. Now the question then is, what am I doing with my tongue? I, I, I put it on, I get that octave, let's say that you've, you've made that octave work, what are you doing? Well I can go... I can do all kinds of on and off rhythms. You've got to work on them to make them work. Da 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 da, and that's just tongue, 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 tongue. It's very important to adjust the corners of your mouth to sort of foreshorten your mouth, maybe to thin out the sound. So there are variables that you begin to learn how to work with. There's a sort of shuffle: one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. You notice the first one got mostly the four blow, and I was kind of going the tongue on one, two, and three blow. The second one was more just the tongue hitting the middle two notes. So the first one, the second one. So those are some variables. Now, what interested me and what Nat was talking about is all the tongue flutters and swishes and side to sides and back and forth and oh, honey, that stuff, that stuff. Oh, 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 that stuff. So here's the sound that got me. This is the sound that made that, 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 that convinced me there was something to this. It was this. How about this? How about this? You like that? about that. I'm going to get banned on YouTube if I keep going. But that's the sound we're talking about. So what I'm doing there is I am wiggling my tongue side to side. But I'm doing more than that. And if somebody tells you to do that, you, the question you might have is, well, where's the tip of your tongue? And this is why these things are really, they're, they're, they're difficult to describe. So the tip of my tongue, if this is my tongue, take a look like that. If that's my tongue, what I'm doing is I'm curling up the tip. So it's, the, if you will, the underside of my tongue. If that's the top and that's the bottom, it's the underside of my tongue that I'm sort of, pushing forward towards the harp. A little like, ah, a little like that. Now you have a whole lot of variables when you do that, a whole lot of variables. And the question then is, what's the shape of your mouth? 
So I can have my mouth kind of long and extended, or I can have it kind of flattened, I think almost like a puff adder, kind of like a, or a rattlesnake or a cobra flattening its head. I adjust the, the, the if you will, the depth of my mouth, sort of thinking from long to short, and that's what I do to get that sound. If it's long, not as effective as And of course, I can introduce the side-to-side -side tongue swish with a little bit of a bend, as I did on the four-hole draw. So I move from lip pursing to tongue blocking. Now, when would you use something like this? Well, you'd use it on a slow blues. Something like that. And what it is really is something to help create tension. When you have a static, a static lick like that, your tongue is going side to side. It's really like an organ player just kind of hitting the root and the flat seventh. The key thing is that side to side swish is only one of the three things that you can do with that tongue in moving it. And my, it was my teacher, Nat Riddles, who showed me this. The other thing you can do, one of the other things you can do, is you can just simply move forwards and backwards. You can kind of put your tongue on and then off the harp. Now, it's tricky at first. You can move it slow on and off. So, in fact, at a shuffle, you can use it as a kind of timekeeper. Up, 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 up. Or you can kind of feather it backwards and forwards, so which is a, a in a much faster way, and it's it, that I find much more difficult. It's very easy to confuse the front, the on and off with the side to side. They're two different motions, and it's very easy for me to end up slipping into the side to side swish. I'm not going to show you what I'm doing with my tongue, you'll have to imagine. Is it true what they say about harmonica players? Well, that's something I'm not going to talk about that here because I don't want this video to get banned from YouTube, but yes, it's true. It's true, and that, that was my, my teacher, Nat Riddles, who told me that again, and I, I didn't believe him, but uh, then I saw the way that the, the women flocked to him and decided that he was telling me something true. You can do that, that's draw, you can do it blow if you want. Now, another kind of tongue blocking uh, thing would be the, the classic blow. So I'm taking the one and four draw, blow, and I'm putting my tongue on the two and three. Kind of putting my tongue forward onto the piece of wood, but then I'm coming up with a rhythm or a kind of counter rhythm. Of course, if I just blow, I run out of air, so I have to stop that one. But anyway, that's one way to do it. If I slow it way down, then I can go. This is not really my style, but every once in a while, this kind of thing is useful to do. Especially first position, I find, with those blow, those kind of blow things. What else can we do? That's a one that little Walter uses, going kind of across from the one to the four. And what I do is just encourage you to fool around with these, see which, see which ones sound nice to you, find the side-to-side -side motion that seems to give you the most effective sound. It's really a question, it's not a question of me telling you what to do, it's a question of you deciding what sounds best and knowing what the variables are. So I'd like you to think about 
and knowing what the variables are. There's one more way to do this, of course, which is you don't move your tongue, but you move the harp on your tongue. And this is, it would be easy to miss this one. It would be to take your tongue and put it on the 2-5 draw, so that means to put it on the 3-4 draw, so the 2-5 draw is what's sounding. And then move it back and forth between that and the 1-4 draw. A little easier to do with two hands than one, and I'm holding the camera with the one hand. I'm holding the camera with the one hand. Anyway, that's it for now. That's the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. See you down the road. Bye-bye.